we thank you for your goodness lord we declare today and acknowledge that you be the center of our life today lord you be the center of this church today god and without you we are nothing lord we are we, our focus is on you today lord that's why we are here to worship you to lift up your name on high lord i dedicate this service unto your mighty hands i pray that your holy spirit will come and take control as we sing song to glorify your name lord be with us help us and guide us my god i pray for the people who are present here today father you know the situations in their heart which they are going through i pray that i pray that your love and mercy will dwell in their lives forever forever and ever father and today through our lives let your name be glorified i dedicate this service into your mighty hands in jesus name i pray amen amen why don't we all give a clap clap proffing to the lord and as the choir leads us into some songs of praise and worship let us join our hands together our hearts together just to worship his name amen amen yeah excited to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is king get all excited to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is king get all excited to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is king Jesus Christ is still the king of kings get all excited get all excited to tell
forever. One last time. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Oh, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever.
longer search, but we won't find anyone that loves us so much. It's loved us so much to give your life for us. Oh, we thank you for your love. There's no one like you and never know above us. That we might be saved.
and gratitude we are here in your presence and Lord we acknowledge that without you we are nothing you are our everything you are our fortress our strength our hiding place our refuge And Lord, we want to thank you that no matter how far we drift from you, that you are right there to lift us up. And you said you never leave us, nor forsake us. Through the storms, through the difficult times, you are right there holding our hands. And we look up to you, Jesus. You are the source of everything that we have. We have full confidence that you have everything in your hands. Our Creator, the one who created the earth, the stars and the moon and the sun, yet you are mindful of us. You know every hair on our head. You see the tears that fall from our eyes. And we look forward to the day when you will come and wipe every tear. from our eyes. Oh, we want to thank you, Lord. Come on, just, just raise your hands and say thank you. Thank you for the hope, the eternal hope that he has given us. He's going to prepare a place for us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we commit this service into your hands. A word that will come. Pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us. And you'll touch the speaker, Brother Edwin, as he speaks. Lord, I pray that 
every word that comes out is out of his mouth will be from you and will touch our hearts and lord that we will apply it in our daily lives we give you all the praise and glory and honor for you deserve all the praises in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. praise the lord praise the lord all right thank you you may be seated god bless you hallelujah praise the lord Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I think the social distancing has meant a lot of you are sitting very far away. <laughs> That's all right. God is good. Thank you. I just heard a few people say that God is good. Amen. Amen. You all agree? Amen. Okay. Can we throw up our fist and say God is good as if we have just won a victory? Ready? Two, three. God is good. Once more. God is good. Amen. Now you're going to tell me why God is good. Sister Esther, I'm coming to you. Maybe one word. Why do you say that God is good? Because I'm alive today. Amen. Thank you. Josh. Because I am saved. Thank you. Come on, you need to cheer and clap. Because we are here today. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good and we are here. Because God is always good to us. Very good. God is always good to us. Hallelujah. You all said that God is good, so you have to tell us, Auntie Saras. He loves us so much. Thank you very much. We have a family. Very good. Uncle. God is good because he has promised us eternity. Amen. God is good because he has promised us eternity. Hallelujah. One more maybe, Sister Milika. Because he provides for us. Amen, hallelujah, he provides for us. So praise the Lord, God is good. We all believe that God is good. Yes. Amen. Can we say again, God is good. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when we say God is good all the time, all the time God is good, we have been saying this for so, so many times. It has become such a common uh, phrase that we use in the church and uh, I just hope that we have not lost the essence of the statement. It is a very important statement that God is good. Praise the Lord. And I just hope that I will be able to remind you of the goodness of God. And um, we will uh, read in Psalms chapter 118. It's a very lengthy psalm, but we will just go through this quickly. Um, you may open your Bibles to that uh, that portion of scripture and I will come to that. But I just want to make a statement here. What we know about the goodness is just the beginning of what we can imagine. Praise the Lord. Did that make sense? What we know about the goodness of God is just the, just the beginning of what we can imagine. You have said that God loves you. You have said that God has a I made a way for you that he has promised us eternity. There's so many things to be thankful to the Lord for, for his goodness, but there's so much more than we can even imagine or we have even realized in our lives. We may not even have realized so many things that the Lord has done that has been good in our lives. Praise the Lord. So he is good. His goodness is beyond our understanding. His goodness is beyond our comprehension. And he is good all the time. He has been good, he is good, and he will be good to us forever and ever. So never lose sight of that, especially when we go through difficult times in our lives. And if we look at the world right now, everywhere around the world, there's fear, there's death, there's sickness. Let's not forget that God is good in the midst of all these things. Especially during these times, when we go through difficulties in our lives, we should remember that God is good. So I just wanted to remind you of that today in this service. And we'll read from Psalms 118. I'll start with verse 1. And it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. The psalmist, the writer of the psalm, he's calling everyone to give. Amen. He's calling everyone to give. Thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm a teacher. 
and I would like you to please uh, participate. It has to be two ways. And I just want to pay, um, uh, bring to your attention, uh, if you can go back to verse 1, please, the starting word, O. Oh. That word, if you um, break it down and look at it, whenever it is used in, in portions of scripture or in, in poems or in writings such as the Psalms, the word O oh is giving uh, emphasis. It's elaborating the importance of the following words that will come after that. So he's, he's giving importance to the portion which says, give thanks to the Lord. So he's saying, oh, give thanks to the Lord. He is sounding it with so much uh, emphasis that he's urging every creation to give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because he is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to know that the Lord that we serve, the Lord that we know, he is good and he is good all the time. He will always be good to us. And then the psalmist says that his mercy endures forever. The word mercy can be translated in many other words and it can be taken as steadfast love of the Lord. It can be taken as the loving kindness of God. It can be taken as, uh, also as the mercy of God. So God's loving kindness, God's steadfast love, God's grace, it endures forever. Praise the Lord. This phrase is used more than 30 times in the book of Psalms. And you can imagine all the different psalmists who have written the book of Psalms. They have time and time and again reminded all of us that God's mercy, His love, His steadfast kindness endures forever and ever. And the word endureth, it means that there is no beginning, there is no end. It will continue forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's give thanks to the Lord because He is good and His mercy and do us forever. His love and do us forever. Verse 2, 3, and 4 tells us who are to give thanks to the Lord. So let Israel now say his mercy and do us forever. Let the house of Aaron now say let his mercy and do us forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say his mercy and do us forever. And in, in simplified um, um, sentences, I can tell you that that the psalmist is saying that the, the people of God, the Jewish people, he's calling them to, to give thanks to the Lord. He's calling the priesthood, the, the family of Aaron, house of Aaron to give thanks to the Lord. And he's calling all the people who know and fear the Lord, you and I, to give thanks to the Lord for his good. Praise the Lord. All of us, no exceptions, all creations, to give thanks to the Lord. So we have established so far that we are to give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His mercy endures forever and we all, regardless of who we are, are to give him the praise that he deserves. Then, if you look at verse 5, 6 and 7, this becomes very important because many of us will find ourselves in the place of the psalmist here. We are, he's explaining what the Lord did when he was in distress. He's talking about the situation that he was in. He remembers the time when he was in trouble and difficulty and what the Lord did to him. So I called on the Lord in distress, the psalmist says, and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. So what is the psalmist saying here? What did he do when he was in distress? What did he do when he was in trouble? What did he do when there was difficulties in his life? When he was going through a patch of his life where things were not right? Many of us, we go through that place in our lives. Many of us, we may be uh, facing the situation such as this right now. In fact, if we, if we lift up our eyes towards the world, the entire world is facing distress at such an extreme level that we have never seen in the history of mankind. The entire world is in distress and we are not immune though we do not have people in, in our communities who have the disease yet we feel the impacts of the disease already in our lives. We have been in lockdown, we, we have lost jobs, people have reduced income, there's um, difficulty in bringing uh, income and food on our table. We all are suffering and are in distress. But what did the psalmist do? He, he called upon the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
He did not call anybody else. He did not call his spouse. He did not call the person that he trusts. He did not call those in authority. But he says that, I called on the Lord in distress. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is what we need to do in our situations. We need to call on the name of the Lord. We must learn to call. Not sit there by ourselves. Not ponder our, on our situation. Why? Why has this happened to me? Why did this situation take place in my life? What will I do? We don't need to fill our minds with questions and think about the situation that we are going through. We don't need to call the, the other people that we trust on. But the first thing that we need to do is to call upon the Lord. Go down on our knees, lift up our hands to him, cry out to him, and give him thanks because he is good even in your difficult situation. Praise the Lord. So when he called the Lord in distress, this is very amazing what the Lord did. What did he do? He set the psalmist in a broad place. If we go to the next verse, Sorry, one verse back, five. Verse five. I call on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place, in a big place, in a place where there's space. And that signifies that God put him in a place which had security, a place where he could stand firm, a place where he can see all around him, a place where he will not feel cornered, a place where he knows that he is in a very secure and firm place. So when we call upon the name of the Lord in our distress, he will set you in a broad place. And then the psalmist says that the Lord was on my side. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is very beautiful and I hope that you will be able to understand this with me. When we go through difficult times, it is always good to have somebody by our side. Isn't it true? You know, when somebody loses a loved one, we all go and try and be by their side to provide them with comfort. When, when children, they go through difficulties, their parents try to be by their sides. When a husband is going through difficulty, the spouse is, the wife is beside uh, the husband, standing by the husband. And the same way for the wife. Every one of us, we all need to have people by our side, our allies, our friends, our family, those who provide support. Sometimes just the presence of somebody beside you helps you overcome a situation. Isn't it right? Don't you all think so? Yes, when countries go to wars, another illustration I'll give to you, they look for allies. So if somebody is deciding to go to war with the rest of the world, a very powerful country, they want to have powerful people standing with them so that if they need anything, they are there to support them. And sometimes when the allies get together, the, the opposition party usually backs out when they see their strength. So they want to build allies, they want to have people who will stand beside them in their time of need. But if you look at what the psalmist is saying here, it's such a beautiful thing he's saying that the Lord is standing beside me. Praise the Lord. Not any man that will grow tired. Not any man that will lack any wisdom. Not any man that, that will fear. Not any man who will not have time to stand beside you. But he is saying that in our time of distress, God Almighty, God all powerful, God the source of all wisdom and knowledge, though God the creator stands beside me. Praise the Lord. Can we give a clear offering to the Lord for that goodness of the Lord? That in the time of our distress, God Supreme is standing by our side. And what is the result of that? The psalmist is saying in the next verse, I will not fear what can men do to me. Praise the Lord. So if the Lord of the Lords, if the King of the Kings, if the mighty, all-powerful, the creator of uh, the creation the name that is above all names is standing beside you in a secure place in the time of your distress. What can men do to you? What can the enemy do to you? No other name can defeat you, but you will have victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and our God. Praise the Lord. Let us rest assured on the goodness of God. He is so, so good that when we call upon his name, he sets us in the right place and he stands beside us. Romans 8, 31 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Praise the Lord for that assurance that if God is for us, no one can be against us. Verse 8 says, Psalms 118, it is better to trust in the Lord 
than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Very simply, it is wiser. It is better to put our confidence in the Lord himself than any other common man or any person who may be in authority. Princes, they were in authority. So we neither put our confidence in any man nor any principalities, nor any powers, nor any authority on this earth, but the authority that is higher than all other, the authority that comes from the Lord himself. So the psalmist knew it to be true. Now, no doubt he must have learned from his experience of bitter disappointments of trusting, putting our confidence in men and on those in authority. Neither the common man, neither anyone in authority could help the way that God can help. I'm not saying that men cannot help. I'm not saying those in authority cannot help. They can, but they can not help in the way that God can help you in your situation. This crisis has shown us that having so much money is of no value. Having so much power in this world has no value. You may have technology, you may have the best of the scientists, you may have the best of the medical people, yet it has no power over the death and the distress that has spread all over the world. This is the time that we all, you and I, the whole world needs to call on the Lord in our distress and remember that He is good and His mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord. The psalmist goes on to explain his situation even more. In verse 10 he says, All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They surrounded me, yes they surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees, they were quenched like a fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. You have pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Praise the Lord. He faced an immense situation where everybody had surrounded him. They were all attacking him and destroying him. But remember something that he said. He understood that the power of victory was not in himself. The power of victory was not in him, not in his own ability, not in any ability of any other person. But the power of the victory was in the name of the Lord and the Lord alone. Praise the Lord. That's why he's saying... In the name of the Lord, I will destroy him. In the name of the Lord, I will destroy him. In the name of the Lord, I will destroy him. Praise the Lord. We must call upon the name of the Lord. And it is only through the name of the Lord that we can have victory in our distress. So when the Lord is our strength, it means that he is our source of resources. He is our refuge. We can look to him for all our needs and we will never be unsatisfied. When the Lord is our song, it means that he is our joy. It means he is our happiness and we find our purpose of life in him. When the Lord is our salvation, it means that we have put our trust for help and deliverance in no other name but the name of the Lord and he will definitely rescue us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I do not know what situations you are going through. But if we put ourselves in the place of the psalmist in this psalm and we see the distress that he was in and we can learn so much from his experience that in his distress he called upon the name of the Lord. The Lord set him in a secure place and the Lord delivered him. The Lord was beside him. Verse 15, 16 and 17 is a time of praise where the psalmist is saying the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So no matter what happens in our lives, even if our dist distress uh, has no end in this present life, still death will not come to us because what waits for us in the future is much, much more important. The everlasting life that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And what does the psalmist say? And we will declare the works of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We know of the goodness of God. We know of what God has done in our lives. We must also declare his goodness to every man, to every nation. We must not give this to ourselves. There may be many people who are going through the situations that you are going through, you've gone through. But you have been able to overcome. You have been able to uh, go through that because you knew of the goodness of the Lord. There are others who do not have any hope because they do not know the love of Jesus. It is our responsibility to declare 
the works of the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the theme of our church for this month, evangelism. And the psalmist is calling to all of us. Not only we should give thanks to the Lord for his goodness in our lives, we must declare his goodness to the rest of the world. Praise the Lord. It is our responsibility. We have heard in the morning service how important it is to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I urge you to do that. Tell about the goodness of God. Tell people how you're able to stay so calm and, and have so much peace in the time of distress. Tell people how you can, uh, in your own sickness and in your own pain, in your own difficulties, you can still stand up and praise the name of the Lord because you know the name of the Lord. There are people who need to know that as well. So please be sure to share the goodness of God. Verse 18 is also very important. It says, the Lord chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. So the Lord, he prunes us. He purifies us. He corrects us to the situations that we may be going through. The songwriter knew very well that God had training and corrective purpose when things go wrong in our lives, when we are going through difficulties. God is still doing something good. He's making us into a better person. He's pruning us. He's correcting us. Sometimes we ask, why? Why is this happening? I'll just give you a very simple illustration to help you understand. I was sick over the week and... Um, Went to the physician and uh, the doctor asked, do you want an injection or a tablet? So I said, okay, I'll take the injection because I want to get well quickly. But you all know what penicillin shot feels like. But I just want to let you know, to help you understand this, that brief moment of pain, maybe a few days, not brief, uh, of, of the penicillin shot did good to me for the rest of the days. I hope you understand what I'm saying. That brief moment of uncomfortable, uneasiness, painful experience, there was good outcome at the end of that. Another example that I can give to you is when, when parents, they give cuff mixture to your children. I, I'm sure there's many of you adults here. I know there are people in this room who don't like to drink cuff mixture. And, and because you know the bitter taste that it has, the, the sour taste or the unpleasant taste, you don't want to drink it. But when somebody forces you to drink it, it later helps you in the long run, doesn't it? It has a good outcome. There's something good that it does in your body. It helps to correct the things that needs to be corrected. In the same way, when we are going through difficulties and situations, let's not complain to the Lord, Lord, why me? Why me? Why me? Why is this happening to me? But let us give him thanks because he is a good, good God. He knows what is going on in your life and he is shaping you, he is pruning you. Even if the devil is throwing so many crises in your life, there will be something good that the Lord will make out of that situation and that something good will change your life and improve your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 19 says, open to me the gates of righteousness and I will grow through them. I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter, for I will praise you and you have answered me and have become my salvation. The end result that we all know of is that one day we will enter into the gates of heaven. We will go there rejoicing and praising him, those who are righteous and right with the Lord, those who have accepted Jesus Christ. That is our ultimate hope. The world may throw anything at us. The life that we are living may throw anything at us. We may even become very sick and die. It doesn't matter at all because what waits after this life is what we are looking forward to. The goodness of the Lord that we will see in, in real life, in person, face to face. And we will know and realize, as I said at the beginning, I made a statement that, that the, the amount of goodness that we know about the Lord is, not, is just the beginning of what we can imagine. And I'm looking forward to the day when we will enter into the heaven and we will see more of the goodness of the Lord. We will realize the whole, uh, the picture, whole goodness of the Lord. He is a good Good God, never forget that. Verse 22 says, The stone which builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And I, I'm sure that you know that this is referring to Jesus and, and we will not go into that, but please do read ahead on that. And I'd just like to jump to the last portion which says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy and do us forever. This is what the psalmist is concluding his psalm. He has told us of his situation. He has told us the principle that we can follow. We can call upon the name of the Lord and he will be there standing beside us. And we will rejoice because the Lord will give us the victory in his name. Praise the Lord. Every day, every moment of our lives, let us remember the goodness of God. Not just when he gives good things to us. 
not just when he answers our prayers, but let us realize that he is good. That's his nature. That's his character. That is who he is. And his mercy endures forever. His love endures forever. His kindness endures forever. Can we all please stand? I do not know what you are going through at this moment in your life. But I just hope that you will remember this. We, we may um, keep saying these sentences and we may forget that God is so good. But I just hope that you, through this uh, very brief explanation, have, have come to a point again where we can appreciate the goodness of God in our lives. That we will remember to praise Him. We will remember that His goodness is in our lives forever and ever. I'd just like to give you an illustration while you are standing. A very simple story and I hope you will be able to understand this. There was a man who was shipwrecked and he was stranded on an island. Every day he prayed. He prayed, God help me. Send someone to rescue me. But to his disappointment, no one came. Months passed, he was all alone. He learned to survive on that island. He started to gather things that will help him to survive. He made a hut which will provide him some shelter. And it became a place of provision, a place of refuge for him. And his life was going on like that. One day when he went to look for food and he was hunting, he came back. To his dismay, to his disappointment, he saw that the hut that he has built with so much hard work was on fire. And everything that he had collected, everything that he was using to um, provide for his needs was in that hut and it was burning in the fire. He was just left with what he was wearing. He was so consumed with anger and rage, if you can just put yourself in his position. A man who has been stranded on an island for so many months, crying out to the Lord, rescue me, send somebody to help me. And then in, on his own, he, he made a way to leave. He built a hut for his refuge and he put all the things that he collected in that hut securely. And one day, all that he possessed on the deserted island, it was up in flames. So he was consumed with anger and rage. He was so angry. He began to throw his fist and started to curse and yell at the Lord. How could you let this happen to me? He was saying, I have been praying every day for months and no one has come to rescue me. And now everything that I have here on this island, that is also destroyed. So he was cursing the Lord. How could you let this happen to me? And while cursing and yelling, he fell to his knees. But when he lifted up his eyes, he saw that in the glimpse, he caught a glimpse of a ship that was coming in his direction. And very soon the man was rescued. So upon his rescue, when he entered the ship, he asked them, how did they know that he was on that island? So the captain said, we saw the signal fire that you lit and we came to rescue you. Dear people, we may be going through a situation in our lives where we do not understand why we are going through that. Where we think that everything that we have tried to make and build is gone. Why is the Lord allowing this situation to enter into my life? Why is the Lord allowing the, the spread of the disease all over the world? Why doesn't he just stop it one day in one moment? He can. Why is the Lord allowing so much distress all over the world? We do not understand. It is not for us to understand, but we have to understand one thing, that God is good and his mercy and do us forever. He sees what we cannot see. He knows what we do not know. He, he can comprehend what we cannot even comprehend. And there is something good that is going to come out of your situation. Many of us can put ourselves in this man's shoes. I want to let you know that what the devil has meant bad for you, God can transform it into something good in your life. Our catastrophe can become a blessing in disguise. For all of you, just trust the Lord. God says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as those who have contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Don't give up. The battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. Tell your sickness that my God, it's your battle, it's not mine. Tell your sickness that my God is good. If you're going through a situation this morning, then I urge you that you tell your situation that my God is good. And this is not my battle to win, but the Lord will stand beside me because I will call upon His name. 
You tell your problem that your God is good and His mercy endures forever. And when you call upon His name, the Lord will stand beside you. Whenever you feel like giving up or giving in, remember that your strength comes only from the Lord and the name of the Lord will be able to deliver you. So don't you dare give up. God has amazing things in store for all of us. And during the battle, the Lord will fight for you. During the, the problems that you will go through, the Lord will strengthen you. And during the tests that you will go through, the Lord will encourage you. We shall all be conquerors. Praise the Lord. Shall we close our eyes? Let us remember the goodness of the Lord. A songwriter has written, I love you, Lord. Or your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I have known you as a father. I have known you as a friend. I live in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. Praise the Lord. The goodness of the Lord be upon your life as we sing this song. Let's just worship the Lord and thank Him. Remember what we said at the beginning. The psalmist says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. And I cannot emphasize enough to all of you today. We need to give thanks to the Lord for His goodness. And His mercy will endure forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, For Your mercy never fails me. It's right. 
Hallelujah. God is good. He's always good. Even though it may seem everything is falling apart, everything is going wrong, but God is still good. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And I think we have had a wonderful message to encourage us to keep trusting the Lord in spite of, in spite of COVID, in spite of setbacks, in spite of no employment, in spite of no source of income to take care of ourselves. God is still good. He'll never fail you. Keep trusting Him, keep honoring Him, and keep working for Him, and He will see us through. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for giving us words of encouragement, helping us to realize that you are always good and your mercy endures forever and ever. And Father, so many times we fail along this area. So many times we have begun to um, bring doubts in our mind and begin to question why, why, why. Forgive us for that, Lord, but tonight, this morning, help us. You have reminded us that you are good all the time in spite of problems and difficulties. And I pray, Lord, that we will have that kind of faith. We lift our hearts up to you. Even in, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we'll know that you are with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us, never uh, doing things that will hurt us, but always good. And Father, we thank you for that. And I pray, Lord, that as people go from this place this morning, they'll go away enriched, thanking you and praising you. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless each and every one, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What a wonderful thoughts from that particular psalm. It's a beautiful psalm. You read it over and over. And the words that should never leave you is his mercy endureth forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning I want to welcome all of you here. This It's been a good day. Good to see you. Um, and um, I don't think there's anyone here for the first time. But whoever you are, wherever you've come from. And uh, we appreciate your attendance here today. In spite of the difficult situation, <clears throat> we have to meet certain requirements uh, to keep us safe. And I'm so glad that you have cooperated so very well in this matter. It is important that we not only keep ourselves well, but we uh, protect others too by our behavior. So all these laws and regulations that have been set aside for us, we need to obey. We know that uh, God takes care of us, all right? Sometimes we get frightened of the COVID and we start thinking about it. But just remember, we take care of ourselves Follow the rules and regulation, and God will never fail us. Keep protecting us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are glad to have you here today. Thank you for abiding by the rules and regulations. It's a difficult, but we are glad that you are here. I want to give you the announcements today. Um, our service, next service will be at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, and then uh, on Tuesday will be time of fasting and prayer. We pray for sick people. We pray for those who are having difficulties. We want you to bring your sick people on Tuesday night. If you are sick, you will have need, you have problems. Last, uh, during quality time of prayer, we prayed for people who were having financial difficulties, jobs and all that. And uh, we had continued to do that on Tuesday. But you have to come and believe. When you come, we pray for you and God takes care of the situation. So that will be on Tuesday. There will be also a Bible study. And this Bible study is a continuation of what we have had um, several weeks ago and also online. Uh, Brother Edwin has been teaching that online. And so that was really good. And we'll continue with the new series now. Uh, and this will be uh, on um, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that's for all Sunday school teachers Heads of department, area ministers, you need to come along and be part of this teaching session. It will bless you, enrich your ministry, and um, make you stronger in the Lord. So that's on Tuesday. Then um, <clears throat> Thursday is the life group. Those are the prayer meetings in different homes. And if you'll see in the um, bulletin at the back there, uh, 
some places there is no name given, so you call the area minister, find out from them what's happening. In Dombati, at Sister Vimla's home, uh, Nandera Nepani Nandawa, Brother Navendra's home, Kinoya Lodala Beach, check with your minister, uh, Newtown Valley Levu, Brother Jay's home, and uh, Narayana Makoi Nosori, Auntie Nisha's, but that's tomorrow night, okay? Not Thursday, but tomorrow night uh, at 7.30. So those are some of the life group meetings that will be happening this week. Uh, and then Friday is a big uh, family night. <clears throat> On Friday night, 7 p.m., we have the men's ministries, the WM, and the youth all coming here for a great time of fellowship and meeting and doing things what they normally do. The men's ministry will be meeting at the kindergarten hall and um, WM's down in the basement and the youth will be meeting over here and all are invited to come with your family. Everyone has a place in the program. So come along and be part of this. Um, then uh, next month's quality time of prayer will be August, um, uh, August first week. We'll announce it a little bit more later on. But on Saturday, Saturday 3 p.m., the worship team, they come for practice. You're interested in singing or playing, you're welcome to come and be part. Sunday morning, 8.30 Sunday, uh, Sunday school, yes. And then 8.30 Hindi service, 11 o'clock uh, uh, will be our 11 a.m. English service. All welcome to come. And I think the <clears throat> Sunday school online will be at uh, 3 p.m., is that right? Joshua? S huh? Or next week? Or next week, okay, next week. Sunday school online next week at 3 p.m. <clears throat> and uh, delayed... Uh, 7, all right. Delayed um, uh, broadcast of the morning service will be at 7 p.m. On Facebook, so you can be part of that too. So all these announcements, you look in your bulletin, we have that. Church cleaning uh, for next week, 19th, is Kinoya Life Group. Please don't miss out on that. We thank God for all the life group. They come to do the cleaning up and arranging the flowers and all that. Thank you for doing that. <clears throat> God bless you. Uh, would you stand with me now as we come to the conclusion was there any need to uh, pray for anyone? Uh, we got missed out on that, but we'll pray for them anyway. Reshna Prasad for healing. Doctors can't ratify, rectify her sickness. She's at home, transferred from Tavuni to Suva. And this is a special request from Brother Samlal. Samlal has a business in Tavini and other places, but he was here this morning. <clears throat> Let's come to this record, uh, report for prayer for Rashna Prasad. Praise the Lord. God is a healer. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We have had miracles, and we'll pray for Rashna, and I know that God will touch her. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God Almighty, we praise you this morning. Praise you for your presence and praise you, O oh Lord, that you are good and you are always good. And uh, this morning, as we have heard the word, I pray, Lord, that we'll meditate upon that and we'll keep it in our hearts and we'll act on it and behave and do things accordingly, knowing that you are good always. We pray for Ashna. Lord, we don't know what is the problem, don't know what's her age or whatever. You know it, O oh Lord. There in Tavuni, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you'll reach out and touch this person, that complete healing will take place, even if the doctors, they cannot find, they cannot do anything, but you are a doctor of doctors, and you'll reach out and touch, and you let your healing virtue just flow through that body for a complete healing, a miraculous healing, divine healing, and we'll give you all the praise and the glory and the honor and Father, this morning I pray for each and every one as they bring in their tithes and offerings. Thank you, Lord, they have come 
cheerfully, lovingly give their offerings. Tithes, as you have commanded, O Lord, they bring their 10% of their income to their storehouse, which is this place, and that your kingdom will lack nothing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that through that we are able to service the things in this church and other requirements and, and support our workers, everyone. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and worship you for this. And may your blessing be upon each one of them as you have promised that you will bless the givers and you will do it in Jesus' name. And Father, I do also pray that as they go from this place this morning, they will go away rejoicing, knowing that you are good and always good. And you'll go away from here. They'll go away from here with the conscience of your presence in their lives. And Lord, doing things that will bring glory and honor. That will be light shining in the darkened world. That they will find peace and joy through our lives. Thank you, Father. I commit each and every one into your hand now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we didn't call the birthday people this morning. Anyone had a birthday or wedding anniversary? Come up in front. And um, as you go, the offering bags are over there. We are not passing the offering bags because of so much handling, hand, uh, handling of the bag. <coughs> and uh, you can lay your tithes and offering in the bag over there. And God will bless you. All right. Over there, Ashriel had her birthday. Praise the Lord. Come this side. And uh, anyone else? Nobody else. Okay. Um, Edwin, how about you pray for? Hallelujah. Let's all pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring our thanksgiving and we just want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness that has been upon Israel's life. We thank you, Lord, for this gift that you've given to the family, uh, into this church, into this world. And Lord, we pray and, and, and we pray and ask that you will continue to be faithful. And Lord, that your mercy will endure in her lives forever. Lord, as he studies, as she um, um, gets her education, we pray that you will lead her and guide her, that your spirit will be with her, helping her in every moment of her life. And Lord, also as she serves in various ministries in the church already, we pray, Lord, that you'll use her as a mighty woman. And as she grows, that she'll become one of the mighty warriors for your kingdom, Lord. And that you'll equip her and you'll bless her and you'll fill her with your Holy Spirit. That your power, your authority and your love will always surround her and your protection will be with her. We thank you so much, Lord. And we return all the glory that belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen.